Hello, today we're here with Brandon Page from Specialized Pipe Technology, one of the valuable vendors in our vendor network here with Associated Gulf Coast. Uh, so vendor, pardon me, so Brandon, uh, if you could walk me through what is Specialized Pipe Technologies? Well, Specialized Pipe Technologies are, uh, to save time and energy on the long title, SPT is a pipe rehab company. Uh, what we specialize in is non-destructive means for dealing with old failing pipes. So in the event that uh, a pipe, be it underground or inside of a building's walls or ceilings, begins to fail and have trouble, we specialize in ways to rehabilitate and repair that pipe without having to cut open walls or ceilings or floors. So when you say without having to cut in the pipes and ceilings and floors and all that, from the layperson like myself, what are you really talking about? You're going to go into the pipes from outside the building or outside the common area space. And, and how does that work? Do you have to dig, dig holes to get access to these pipes? Or, or what are we actually talking about? So within a building or a home, whether it's a high rise, uh, whether it's a single story home, commercial building, school, regardless of the structure, you have piping systems serving that building, specifically on the drainage side, that are located underground and within the walls. So if one of those pipes begins to fail or have issues, you know, the conventional method is you have a leak, stains the wall, or you have a backup that floods a unit. Um, in the event that that takes place and it becomes some type of a reoccurring problem, normally what would happen is a property manager or an owner would make arrangements to have a plumber or general contractor come out and physically cut open and access the section of pipe that has had the issue that's failed. Uh, if you look out and you cut the wall or the floor open in the right spot, uh, then there would be a conventional replacement of some sort where an original pipe would be physically cut out and a new pipe would be put in its place to repair the, the bad crack or leak, whatever it may be. And then all the finished materials put back, concrete, tile, wood, drywall, marble, et cetera. Uh, as you can imagine, that can be both frustrating and costly. So the simplest analogy that I like to use is that in the event that someone realizes they're having heart complications, you know, years ago, if, if you needed a heart operation or heart surgery of some kind, really the only op option was to have your chest cut open uh, and your heart physically held in the hands of a, a doctor while they, you know, perform open heart surgery. Uh, one of the wonderful blessings of the technology that we have today is that we now have options available to us should we have a heart complication that a doctor can many times address an issue with an artery by installing a stent. Uh, case in point, my, my father, uh, his wife, a couple of years ago had some chest pains. She was physically fit, no issues. Next thing you know, they're in the doctor's office and she's got like four major arteries blocked. Uh, and within 24 hours, they installed, uh, I think three or four stents uh, to reopen the flow of blood in those arteries. They did this all remotely from an, a small incision in the inside of her thigh and we're able to you know, restore her health and get her right back to normal life. So pipelining in effect to draw a picture type analogy is very much the same. Uh, we're going to use existing accesses that are already there for the building such as uh, vents or stack pipes on the roof of a, of a home or building or clean outs that are located out in the front of the building in order to get camera equipment in the pipe and then as a result, build what is called a uh, cured in place pipeliner to slip inside the line to a designated point where there's a problem and then inflate the liner, let it cure over the process of about two to three hours and remove it just like the installation of a stent in an artery. Now, it, now you, you, you didn't describe the uh, heart and the artery. I mean, I think everybody can relate to that um, from, a, from a medical perspective. What is it that the board, what is it that the managers would be noticing that would say, hey, wait a second, something's wrong? Are we talking something as simple as uh, your 
drainage of the entire building just taking forever? You know, your, your toilets don't, don't flow properly. Is there anything specific that says, this is why I would call SPT if I'm noticing blank? So fill in that blank for me. So there's three big red flag warning signs that we encourage people to watch out for. Uh, the first being slow drainage. So for any reason, uh, whether it's a home or a high rise building, if you start having slow drains, meaning that the drain for whatever reason, just it won't drain out as it should, or you start to have the sound of gurgling in a system, uh, these are signs that for whatever reason, there's an obstruction of some kind or restriction. Uh, a lot of the pipes and buildings uh, that are roughly 25, 30 years or older are cast iron. So they have a tendency to corrode. Uh, so slow drainage can be the result of corrosion, just like artery, like plaque buildup in an artery. Uh, another issue can be the, the sign of leaks. So drain line leaks are frustrating in that they can come and go, meaning that water only leaves a pipe when it's, you know, passing through the system. So case in point, your neighbor two stories above you flushes the toilet, uh, and an hour later, a little bit of dampness or staining appears on the wall a couple of stories down. Uh, this can be very frustrating in a high-rise building because on, when it comes to drain line leaks, as you can see this picture we have up, a corroded pipe is kind of fickle. One day it'll work, and then one day because of uh, waste or paper products that are passing down through the vertical and horizontal pipes in the building, a piece will catch and it will begin to block up and restrict. And essentially this is the equivalent to the system having a heart attack. Um, if this starts to happen on a regular basis, managers tend to know there's something wrong because they're having to call a plumber, someone to come out and snake the drain or run a jetter. Uh, when this starts happening on a regular basis, it's usually a red flag that there's something more serious wrong than just, um, just an intermittent stoppage with the pipe. Uh, one of the final things that will begin to take place outside of slow drainages, slow drains or leaks is a full on stoppage, meaning that you have water unable to um, drain and it typically will back up on a lower level floor unit inside of a home it's going to show and back up at the lowest point in the system which is normally like the tub drain in a hall bath or maybe a master bath so those are the big three things that we say if you start to have these issues it's probably time to have someone come out and do a, a video inspection of the pipes to see if it's just a spot where there's a problem area and a a generalized location or if there's a, a larger, more kind of system-wide fundamental problem that needs to be addressed. So as we're looking at the pictures in front of us, one is a, from my perspective, a disgusting pipe. <laughs> and from the other side, obviously it's clean and it's wonderful and it's perfect. From a cost perspective, I can make an assumption that not having to tear open walls and not having to dig underground it's going to be less expensive to do it your way through SPT is that a is that a a, a fair assumption there yes the, the most basic value that we offer is cost savings uh, it's very straightforward and simple uh, and you can imagine your assumptions are correct once a pipe begins to be corroded like that uh, what you're actually looking at at the picture on the left is the outside probably say quarter inch thickness of that that pipe is the actual cast iron piping material but everything on the inside is just a mixture of corrosion it's rust it's minerals it's scale it's waste that's built up over the years and created this this material that is gives ground a rise to blockages from a cost savings point of view when a pipe gets in that condition you really have only one a uh, low cost option and that's to attempt to clean the pipe. Uh, cleaning the pipe can work. It can buy time in most cases, but in some instances as the pipe if it's badly corroded or it begins to become fragile, the, the, there becomes to be some risks associated with cleaning it where it can break or it can actually ex exaggerate the problem. Case in point, if equipment's being ran down through a pipe like that, breaking it loose, it's got to go somewhere. So it'll typically drain to some other point in the system where it stops up, usually lower and further out and causing a more common you know, system-wide problem where what started as a unit owner's issue now becomes a building-wide problem. 
Uh, the pipe on the right is an example of the same style type of four inch cast iron pipe, the most common pipe in most homes and high rise buildings. And what's happened is that corrosion has been removed and then a liner has been installed. That bluish kind of aqua colored uh, material on the inside is an epoxy based liner. It's a pipe that slipped into place like a stent uh, and seals the pipe from the inside, preventing it from ever corroding again and preventing it from leaking should there have been any issues with the structural integrity of the pipe. So cost savings in the, in the general sense, the real savings comes into point or comes into view when you realize that you're not cutting open walls and floors, uh, you're not tearing out from top to bottom on a 10-story building or open trenching, you know, the lobby of the, of the, the main walkway or the parking lots. Uh, the money is saved when you're not tearing up landscaping, sidewalks, block and all the other materials. So the, the cost savings lining pipe, um, in many instances, a lot of people, when they do a comparison to conventional pricing or conventional pipe replacement, it's somewhere between 40 to 50% less uh, when you take into account all of the associated remodel costs that typically come with repiping a building. Is it also fair to say that not only could our board or our clients, I should say, or really anybody, not only save money, but also, can you talk to me a bit about the time, your normal, if, if it's you versus somebody who's taken pipes out, I'm gonna make the assumption that from the time it takes to actually do the work, SPT is gonna take less time to solve that problem than a, another company that's gonna to need to tear stuff out, uh, trench areas, those types of things. So can you speak to me a bit about time it's gonna take uh, regard, you know, if you were to compare it against somebody going into walls and tearing things out. Yeah, so a simple kind of a catch phrase that I like to use is 50-50. So think of it this way. Most of the time, whether we're dealing with a homeowner or a high-rise condo with 300 units, most of the time, you, there's going to be about a 50% cost savings in comparison to a conventional pipe replacement. It also takes about 50% less time, half the time in most cases, or you could say twice as fast. So 50-50. Uh, in the instance of pipe lining, one of the great advantages to it, is not only the cost savings, but the convenience. Uh, if you can imagine <clears throat> uh, physically ripping the pipes out of a building, most, in most instances, there's some measure of fairly substantial to major inconvenience, meaning that owners, units, unit uh, tenants have to physically leave during the tear out process. For one, it, it creates an enormous mess. Um, and so most people don't wanna stay around, not to mention that the facilities are out during that period of time. So during a pipelining uh, project, the nice thing is uh, people stay typically in their units, They're, they can use the facilities, uh, all the way up until the point, the time that a liner is installed to cure. This cure time is approximately start to finish four to five hours per individual line. So most instances, uh, say in a high rise building or in a home, people might we encourage them, you know, go out for the afternoon to the beach, go, go shopping, um, to stay, maybe one side of the home will be still in operation while the other is being lined. But uh, once a pipe is lined, it can be put right back into service. So you figure three to four hour downtimes where individual pipes that are not being cut open are being sealed, rehabilitated with these liners. So uh, from, a, from a time uh, point of view, it's much less disruptive and, and much faster. You know, we can install any given day, depending on the number of people, anywhere from 150 to 300 linear feet of pipe uh, in a given day. So when you're talking about vertical stacks or underground drains, again, uh, unit owners, uh, homeowners, typically they don't experience a whole lot of inconvenience, other technicians coming in to do cleaning on one day and lining on it. Uh, this is typically all done uh, on a schedule that they're made aware of and can really go about their routine without a, a, that much of disruption. Well, Brandon, I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you a little bit here about how SPT uh, can make our lives as managers and certainly as board members uh, easier, for lack of a better phrase. But 
if we needed to get, if the manager needs to get in touch with you, or if a board member wants to reach out to you directly and ask them questions, or are in need of an evaluation, what's the best way to reach you directly? Naturally, up, up on the screen, I see the 866 number, but is there a, a different phone number that I can get you directly if I'm a board member or a manager? Yeah, you're welcome to call me directly. Um, I'll give you both my phone number and my email address. My mobile phone number is 941-724-4492. And my email address is real simple. It's my first name, Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N, and the letter P, at sptpipe.com. Uh, we also use, on our website, you can go uh, and ask for information or someone to reach out. We use a web, web address, info, sptpipe.com between myself and the website and the information on the screen, multiple ways to get a hold of us. We have an entire team of people that specialize just in consultations. So between myself and the rest of us, we're happy to come and answer any questions you might have. Outstanding. Uh, once again, Brandon, really do appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Really do thank you for not only your efforts, but the efforts of SPT uh, in helping our clients uh, solve some of their piping issues. Uh, and quite frankly, just allowing them to be better neighbors so that they're not frustrated with these long, drawn-out, uh, large-scale piping and plumbing projects. Again, thank you very much for the time. Really appreciate the appreciate your help and much continued success with SPT. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity.